Number 5. The Love Affair at Joshua Tree Erin Heverland's journey began in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where her deep affinity for horses and animals shaped her compassionate spirit. A connection with John Corwin ignited in the fifth grade. It flourished into a romantic relationship, and the two were married in November 2012. Yet beneath the classic love story, a harrowing saga of twisted emotions, blood, and death would eventually unfold. As the couple settled into life at John's Marine Base in 29 Palms, California in 2013, the idyllic facade began to unravel. Their residence was shared with two other couples, Connor and Aisling Malachi, alongside their son Brian, as well as Chris and Nicole Lee, with their daughter Liberty. While their husbands fulfilled their military duties, the wives formed a close-knit bond, seeking solace and companionship in shared snacks and conversations. In the presence of their partners, the trio of couples forged friendships, engaging in barbecues, movie nights, and endless laughter. Amidst this unity, however, an insidious connection between Erin and Chris began to stir. Chris Lee, drawn to dangerous weaponry, which earned him a reputation of recklessness on the Marine base. Erin, captivated by his bad boy charisma, succumbed to his magnetic pull. Amidst the throes of early marriage, John and Erin grappled with financial hardships and the loss of a pregnancy, pushing their relationship to its limits. Erin's vulnerability became the breeding ground of a clandestine relationship with Chris. The boundaries blurred, their shared secrets deepened, and a fateful night in February 2014 marked the start of a scandalous affair. As whispers of their involvement reached Nicole Lee, the situation exploded, yet the affair went on resulting in Erin's second pregnancy. Chris planned a trip to Joshua Tree National Park on June 28, 2014, originally intended as a joint venture with his friend Connor. Fate intervened, however, as Connor wasn't able to make it, leaving Chris to journey alone. Coincidentally, Erin set out for Joshua Tree on the same day to scout locations for her mother's upcoming visit. And of course, the two paths crossed. As the day progressed, Erin's absence raised alarms, prompting a police investigation that quickly unveiled the web of deceit. Chris Lee's fabrications crumbled under scrutiny, revealing damning evidence, a garret concealed in his car, indicative of a sinister intent. His online search history revealed him looking up disposing of a body. The twisted truth emerged. Chris had lured Erin to Joshua Tree National Park under the pretext of a romantic escapade a proposal of marriage concealed within his sinister scheme. Instead, she met her demise at his hands, strangled, her life extinguished in a mere five minutes. Despite the relentless search efforts encompassing over 1,200 square miles of the park, Erin's remains were still missing. It wasn't until August 16th, following the suspension of the search, that an awful stench emanating from an abandoned mine revealed her final resting place. Erin Corwin, strangled and discarded, lay 200 feet below, ensnarled in a chilling grave. Erin's journey to Joshua Tree, once envisioned as a harbinger of love and commitment, turned into a harrowing tale of betrayal and darkness. Chris Lee was sentenced to life in prison. Number 4. The Yosemite Killer Between February and July of 1999, the natural wonder and beauty of Yosemite National Park transformed into a horrifying nightmare. Its serene landscapes became tainted as numerous lifeless bodies were dumped throughout the park. In March of that fateful year, the grim discovery of three murdered women jolted law enforcement. The sinister upsurge reached its peak in July when police discovered a headless corpse, a mysterious puzzle that unraveled to reveal the figure now known as the Yosemite Park Killer. Rewinding the clock to 1972, the tragic tale of Stephen Stainer's abduction from Merced, California, casts a haunting shadow. Stephen was held captive for seven years, enduring brutal torture, until one miraculous day he escaped. However, the aftermath of unthinkable suffering left Stephen shattered. Surprisingly, his own brother, Carrie Stainer, emerged as a harbinger of darkness. Whether driven by the traumatic ordeal that befell his sibling or an innate darkness, Carrie's transformation into a monster was a chilling reality. 
Nearly three decades after his brother's ordeal, Carey took on the sinister mantle of the Yosemite Park killer. Tragically, Stephen's resilience would be cut short as he died in a motorcycle accident in 1989. In the years that followed, Carey secured employment as a handyman at the Cedar Lodge, an establishment nestled at Yosemite Park's entrance. Isolated in his work, he hatched nefarious plans. The narrative takes a grim turn in mid-February 1999, when Carol Sund, her teenage daughter Julie, and Julie's friend Sylvina Palosso checked into the Cedar Lodge. Amid their stay, the trio vanished without a trace. Carrie, masquerading as a helpful hand, lured them into a trap by claiming to address a leak in their room. Once inside, he strangled Carol and Sylvina, callously disposing of their bodies. He forced 15-year-old Julie into his vehicle and drove around for hours before killing her and setting the car on fire. He left the bodies of Carol and Sylvina in the car, but took Julie's body somewhere else. A twisted cat and mouse game emerged as Carrie sent a letter to police, taunting them and revealing the location of Julie's remains. Despite a brief interaction with law enforcement, suspicions waned and Carrie slipped through the cracks. Things came to a head on July 22, 1999, with the grisly discovery of Joey Armstrong's decapitated remains near her Yosemite cabin. Selecting her as his next victim, Carrie's sinister pursuit led to a violent confrontation, ultimately taking Joey's life. But Carrie left some evidence behind, which were tire tracks and an abandoned hat. As the walls closed in around him, Carrie sought refuge in a nudist camp, a futile bid to escape justice. When police found him, he readily confessed to his disturbing crimes, claiming he could not help himself. He was charged with four counts of first-degree murder and now resides within the confines of San Quentin State Prison. A contentious legal battle spares his life, but the Yosemite killer will be in prison for the rest of his days. What are your thoughts on Carrie Stainer getting to live the rest of his life in prison? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 3. Shenandoah Cold Case in the spring of 1996, Julianne Williams and Lolly Winans, two spirited women in their mid-twenties, embarked on a fateful adventure through the scenic Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. Accompanied by their loyal golden retriever Taj, they were brimming with anticipation for their journey. However, their enthusiasm was cut short as a heartless killer took their lives. Shenandoah National Park was established in 1935, it stretches across the Blue Ridge Mountains, encompassing approximately 197,000 acres of captivating terrain. Julie and Lolly's fate took a devastating turn. With over 500 miles of hiking trails and an expanse of 80,000 acres of wilderness, the vastness of the park poses both beauty and peril. The pair set up camp next to a mountain stream adjacent to a horse trail. But the picturesque setting would soon transform into a scene of unimaginable horror. Julie, an avid enthusiast of sports and geology, had achieved remarkable success, securing the Minnesota State Double Tennis Championship during her high school years. Her insatiable curiosity led her to Europe and the study of dinosaurs, while her active involvement within the community eventually led her to meet Lolly. Lolly, coming from a privileged background, defied her family and its wealth by forging her own path. After dropping out of college, she began life as a wilderness guide in Maine, fully immersing herself in the rugged beauty of nature. The convergence of their passions led the woman to build a strong bond, paving the way for their ill-fated journey to Shenandoah National Park. Tragedy struck on a Sunday in May 1996, as the victim's golden retriever was found wandering without his owners. A somber discovery awaited searchers. Lolly, bound with duct tape and partially unclothed, lay within their tent, while Julie's lifeless body was discovered some 40 feet away, nestled on an embankment. A camera that documented their hike was recovered, providing a haunting glimpse into their last moments. Despite the evident danger posed by an unknown assailant, 
Authorities hesitated for 36 hours before disclosing the heinous act. Park Superintendent Greg Stiles labeled it as an isolated incident, while the FBI declared the murders to be random. The quest for justice led investigators to Daryl David Rice, a man whose violent disposition was evident through previous assaults. A disturbing incident in July 1997 involving a Canadian tourist near the site of the murders resulted in Rice's apprehension. An arsenal of disturbing items, including leg restraints, were discovered in his possession. In 1998, Rice was convicted of attempting to abduct the Canadian tourist and was sentenced to 135 months in federal custody. Subsequent inquiries linked him to the murders of Julianne and Lolly, yet the lack of forensic evidence thwart the case. A broader effort to link Rice to the unsolved murder of Alicia Reynolds, another victim from the spring of 1996, faltered in the absence of conclusive evidence. Despite the tireless endeavors of law enforcement, the tragic deaths of Julianne Williams and Lolly Winans continues to evade resolution, leaving a haunting void in the tapestry of Shenandoah National Park's history. Number 2. Unsolved Mysteries in the Grand Canyon The chilling events of a fateful day in January 1977 continue to cast a shadow over the Grand Canyon National Park as the perplexing deaths of Michael and Charlotte Sherman remain a mystery. The couple were headed home to California from a trip to Texas and decided to stop and visit the iconic park. Despite the frigid conditions and lack of tourist presence, the Shermans paused to absorb the breathtaking views, a moment that would mark the last chapter of their lives. In a shocking turn of events, Michael and Charlotte found themselves forced to kneel on the ground victims of an execution-style killing that occurred shortly before 11 a.m. The identities of their killers remained a mystery for decades. Leading the investigation was Joe Sumner, a dedicated services branch agent. The audaciousness of a daylight robbery and murder within a national park left him baffled. Sumner surmised that the killer was waiting to strike again. Upon extensive examination in 1977, the motive behind the double murder was revealed as robbery. Michael's wallet and Charlotte's purse, now forever vanished, became grim tokens of a tragic event. The couple's lives were cut short by a .22 caliber handgun, a detail that accentuated the severity of the crime. The killer or killers then callously moved their bodies, concealing them at the Powell Memorial, an elaborate scheme to attain a mere wallet and purse. Eyewitnesses sharing the park's serene expanse recall glimpses of an unidentified man and woman, their presence etched into the memories of those who were there. A light tan station wagon, complete with a ski rack, served as their vehicle of choice. Yet despite efforts to decipher their identities, these figures remained enigmatic specters within the narrative. A glimmer of hope arose in 2013 when a tip led investigators to Georgia where a couple reminiscent of the 1977 description resided. Hope soared briefly, only to be dashed as the man's involvement in a separate robbery homicide case proved unrelated to the Grand Canyon tragedy. Time has not diminished the resolve of investigators, who persistently strive to discover the truth of this perplexing case. Joe Sumner, undeterred by the years that have passed, resubmitted key evidence collected from the crime scene including DNA from an unidentified source. Yet a match remains elusive, leaving the case shrouded in uncertainty. As the Grand Canyon's breathtaking vistas stand as silent witnesses to the unsolved enigma that unfolded within its embrace, the tale of Michael and Charlotte Sherman continues to beckon for justice, a poignant reminder of the unrelenting pursuit of truth within the realm of shadows. Number 1 Yosemite Downfall In the fall of 2018, a young couple's aspirations of thrilling adventures came to a heartbreaking end within Yosemite National Park. Vishnu Vishnuath and Minakshi Muthi were travel bloggers who sought to capture the essence of their wanderlust-filled journeys. Their quest for the perfect shot, however, led to their tragic fate. 
Vishnu and Minakshi venture to Taft Point, a captivating overlook that extends perilously over Yosemite Valley, revealing an awe-inspiring panorama that stretches 3,000 feet into the horizon. A pristine vantage point, it beckoned with the promise of untamed beauty, yet it remained devoid of the protective railings or fencing that could shield those who ventured too close. With a tripod set up, the couple set the stage for a memorable shot. In the quest to immortalize the moment, Vishnu and Minakshi inched backward towards the cliff's edge, an unfortunate misstep that had them tumbling to their death. Another hiker came to the spot shortly after and noticed the tripod standing alone on the precipice and a camera capturing an incomplete vision of the ill-fated endeavor. The hiker put the pieces together and alerted park authorities. Rangers were led to the depths of the valley where the lifeless bodies of the young adventurers bore witness to the tragic consequences of a fateful misjudgment. In the aftermath of this heart-wrenching incident, the wild allure of Taft Point resonates with an added layer of caution, a reminder that nature's grandeur can mask perilous precipices. The memory of Vishnu and Manakshi serves as a poignant reminder of the fine line that separates breathtaking beauty from the unforgiving edge of tragedy. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get lost in a national park for two weeks or be attacked by a mountain lion and barely survive? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on Bad Badger.